Hey guys, this is David Wong, and I'm introducing you to a new series of videos on proof composition and recursion. Proof composition, maybe I should have written that in advance. Proof composition and recursion. And so this is really about zero knowledge proof systems. And so if you haven't watched my series of videos that I did previously on Plonk, I highly recommend watching it before this series of videos. Uh, it'll give you an idea of what a proof system really is, if you don't know already, and it'll also give you some ideas of what's in that black box. I'm going to try to stay uh, use things as black boxes without looking into it as much as I can. But of course, uh, I can promise to do that every time. And so if you can watch it, I think it's, uh, it, you'll have a better experience. So in this series, I'm going to start, uh, in this first video, I'm going to start introducing the concept of proof composition and recursion. Uh, and then the next video will be about something called Sangria that actually just came out uh, very recently, uh, last week or something like that. So very timely for my, my series of videos. And Sangria is based on another protocol called, called Nova, but uh, for uh, this is for Plonk. And so this is the the proof system that I've been talking about, so, that, so I'll stay on topic. Um, Sangria is a way to compose proofs and, and do recursion as well before you even create a proof. And for this reason, I'll call that uh, pre-proof pre uh, composition or pre-proof recursion, or, or maybe, um, maybe some people might want to call that witness uh, composition or witness recursion or something like that. Uh, I, I like the term pre-proof composition, pre-proof recursion. And then I'll, I'll explain how to actually use that uh, in practice uh, with Nova. So if that doesn't make any sense at the moment, don't worry. And then I will introduce um, IVC and PCD and, and proof composition and recursion, recursion in general um, through specific examples and constructions and so on. So what does do, do these things stand for and what is proof composition and recursion? Let me take a step back and kind of like introduce the, the problem of proof composition, which is that sometimes you create some proofs, you know, you, you execute some circuits and you, you create a proof of correct execution. And then you want to create another proof that verifies the previous proof and build on top of it. And that's the whole idea of proof composition. It's proofs building on top of other proofs. Okay, so the, so when you get that, if, if that makes sense to you, and please pause the video if, if you need to think about it, but when you verify this proof as a verifier, you'll get for free uh, the, whole, the whole statement. So you'll get for free that this was true and, and, uh, and this was true. And so you can sort of like build, um, build a bunch of proofs like that and, and maybe this proof verifies two different proofs at the same time and you can sort of like create trees of proofs uh, and build all sorts of crazy things. Perhaps the a good way to think about it, and, and that's my mental model, that's how I think about it, um, but I think it, it works well, is that imagine that you have a function that's called f my function f1, you know, like, like a real function in a programming language, right? Uh, that does something. And imagine that your function calls another function f2 with some arguments and, and uses the output of that function. Then if you if you say that this is a circuit that you can prove, and this is a circuit that you can also prove, you can sort of emulate this function calling another function via this proof composition uh, by saying that, um, let me use a different color maybe, by saying that since this is a circuit, you can prove this execution and get a p by two. And F1 is also a circuit, and you'll get a, a pi one that within it verified um, the other proof. And that's how F1 can use the result of F2 because it verified its proof um, and the output that it emitted. And so that's sort of my way to, to think about proof composition. It's just, uh, I'm just thinking of like, you know, def F1. And it's like a equals f two with some I don't know maybe maybe f one takes like b uh, f two with b 
and then uh, you know you return. <laughs> I'm I'm just making it up. Uh, F three with A, and maybe this is F F three. Um, and so your your function calls here will correspond to other circuits that were proven and that you made use of in your in your logic here. And I believe this way of thinking about proof compositions, kind of like as functions that are calling each other, is a good way to think about the is a good analogy because it, it seems to hold pretty well, at least at least for me. The recursion part, so so far I was talking mostly about proof composition, the recursion part is basically the same as uh, recursion in programming language as well. So if you have def, uh, let's say f1 is uh, is saying you know f1 x plus one, or if, if you have something like that, you're recursing, right? You, your function calls itself, and so that's basically what we mean by recursion in in a in proof system. It's like it's like a yeah, it's like the proof of a function being used inside the proof of the same function being used inside the proof of the same function and so on and so on. And you can sort of like continuously, you know, do a state transition and, and continue to, to, to build something or to continue to execute the same logic on top of the previous step, if that makes any sense. We'll, we'll see some examples, so don't worry too much about it. Um, but basically, this thing here is what we call IVC, and this thing here is what we call PCD. So IVC stands for increment, incremental or incrementally or something like that, very verifiable computation. Oops. Increment, incrementable, incremental, I, I don't know, something like that. And PCD stands for proof carrying data. I don't really like the name. I actually, I like none of these names because to me, they, they, they're not very descriptive. So I think this is a good way to think about it. PCD is like, I might call different functions and the function I call might depend on, on the input, you know, like depending on the logic, I might call different function, exactly like, you know, when you write the logic for a normal function in a program language. And I, IVC is really just recursion when you're um, when you're when you're just repeating. You're always calling the same function over and over again. But you can think of PCD as like a more general concept, where PCD can also do recursion. So so for for example, F1 here could call could call F1 here as well. So PCD is a more general thing. If you have PCD, you have IVC. But if you have IVC, you don't necessarily have PCD. Cool. So I think that's enough of an intro. I'll give more examples as to why these things are useful and how we use them in different uh, in different crypto systems and protocols. But I, I want to keep this one short, so 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 let's leave it at that. Okay. So see you at the next video to talk about Sangria and this concept of pre-proof witness, um, and, and I'll tell you more about why it's so different from 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 the rest here.